Hi, welcome back to my channel and for today's video for the calculus series, we will be talking about continuity of functions. guys thank you so much for your undying support for those who are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that i'll be uploading soon we will start with the definition first of what does it mean when a function is continuous at a point it says here that a function f of x is said to be continuous at x equals a if and only if this will be satisfied okay and then a function is said to be continuous on the interval which is the closed interval a b if it is continuous at each point in the interval so this would me mean one thing so a function f of x is said to be continuous at x equals a if and only if number one the limit of f of x as x approaches a exists Number two, f of a is defined. And number three, the number one is equal to the number two. Okay, so we will consider here an example. First, let's start first with number one. So is f of x equals x squared minus 4 all over x minus 2 is continuous given at x equals 2. For number one, observe that. If we're gonna solve for f of a, so that's gonna be f of 2. So this is going to be 2 squared minus 4 all over 2 minus 2, which is 0 over 0. This is already undefined. So therefore, number 1, the answer here is no. So how about number 2? Is f of x equals this one um minus x squared plus 4 if x is less than or equal to 3 and uh, 4x minus 8 if x is greater than 3 continuous at 3. so let's begin to calculate first so this is for number two now that's uh f of three uh we're gonna select which one of these can be used to justify f of 3 now in this case however we will select this first one here because it should be equal to 3 so this one will represent instead of this okay so um, we have negative of 3 squared plus 4 so that's gonna be negative 9 plus 4 and that's equal to negative 5 so that's gonna be our f of 3 so we will double check the limit the existence of the limit of f of x at as x approaches 3. So let's try identifying first when x approaches 3 from the left. Observe that when this is 3 from the left, meaning to say that we're gonna find uh, what's gonna be the behavior at x is less than or equal to 3. So because it's from the left. So meaning to say that um, you have the limit of x as x approaches 3 from the left of uh, f of x so that's gonna be negative uh, 3 squared plus 4 so that's equal to negative 5 okay how about when um, x approaches 3 from the right so that's gonna be limit of x as x approaches 3 from the right so we're gonna select this one because it's from the right of 3 so we're gonna have f of x so that's gonna be 4 times 3 minus 8 so that's gonna be 12 minus 8 which is equal to 4 now back from what we have learned from the previous video about the existence of limits um, you might want to check down here this thumbnail represent the video in my youtube channel that when Two sides of limit do not coincide then the entire limit does not exist the left hand side of the limit is negative 5 and the right hand side of the limit is 4 so they're not equal therefore does not exist so the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 does not exist 
So since it does not exist, therefore, um, number two function is not continuous. So how about for number three? So is f of x, when this is equal to sine x over x if x is not zero, and it's one when x equals zero. So is this continuous? So obviously, if we're gonna solve for f of zero, that's automatically one. This is by the definition. And then, um, if we're gonna take a look into the limit of f of x as x approaches zero, so that's gonna be that's gonna be sine x over x, and that's equal to one. So therefore, um, they coincide. So therefore, this number three here is continuous. Okay, so. Um, in conjunction with um, the topic for our continuity of a function at a given point, then uh, we will have a theorem that will help us give the idea on what is the behavior or what's the continuity of a certain function. Let's say a function is a polynomial or it's a rational function. So the theorem says here that polynomials and rational functions are continuous at every point in their domains. So take note, um, in this case, they are continuous in their domain. So first things first, in order for us to identify if that polynomial or rational functions are continuous, then they must have to be defined on their domains. Otherwise, if they're not defined on a given domain, then they're not continuous to it. So that's actually the message of the theorem. So let's say for example, Let's go to number one. For what values of x is f of x equals x plus one all over x minus five is continuous. So first things first, we're gonna solve for what the domain of this f of x first. So remember that the domain here of f of x is the set of real numbers except the set containing five because these will not hold if your x is equal to 5 because that might lead i mean that may that will lead to being undefined so therefore f of x is continuous on this domain so for number two for what values of x is f of x equals 3x to the 4 minus 4x squared continuous now even if we put any value for a set of real numbers um this will not lead into being undefined so therefore this is continuous in the entirely on a set of real numbers okay so since we're talking about the continuity of a function so and if you have noticed on the previous examples um there are functions which are not continuous at a given point so we will talk about these types of discontinuity at a given point so a function f of x is discontinuous at a, then number one, this is removable discontinuous if the limit exists. So if the limit exists, then this is removable discontinuous. Number two, it is jump discontinuous if the left side limit exists and the right side limit exists but they are not equal. Always take note that when we talk about the existence of the left side limit or the right side limit, they should be less than infinity. So meaning to say they are all finite. Now for number three, f is infinite discontinuous if either of the left or the right limit of f of x as x approaches to the given point is positive or negative infinity. Okay, so let's take a look into the examples at which the functions are discontinuous. So of course, we will ignore number three here because this is already continuous. So let's start first with number one. If you notice, the reason why number one is discontinuous, it's because our two here is undefined. But if you take the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 this is the same as limit of um, x minus 2 times x plus 2 all over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 so this will be cancelled so you have limit of x plus 2 so this is 4 so that means to say that the limit exists so since the limit exists but uh, it fails to hold at f equal 
f of 2, this discontinuous type is removable. Now, for number 2, the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 does not exist because the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the left is not equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the right. So since they are not equal, so according to the definition, this is jump discontinuous. Okay, so we will have one last example. So we have this function here, if it's either um, x squared, if x is not 1, and 3 if x is 1. So we will see the discontinuity or continuity at x equals 1. Uh, f of 1, so this is technically 3, but the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is not equal to f of 1. So therefore, since they are not equal, then, but this limit exists, then this is removable. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. So before we end this video, I will leave you with a question first. State the interval or intervals over which the function f of x equals the square root entirety of 4 minus x squared is continuous. So we will be able to answer this by the time that we will have to further study with the continuity. So we will have to continue with this topic for the next video. And thank you so much for all your support and we'll see you again for the upcoming video. So guys, thank you. Have a great day.